Jesus. I should have been dead. I should have been dead. I should have been dead. I should have been lost. I should have been messed up. I should have been ha- gone out of my mind. Hallelujah. But God. Somebody say, but God. Somebody say, but God. Ah, somebody say, but God. Is this all right? Is this all right? I just feel like having a little fun in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I just feel like having a little fun. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not trying to play cheerleader today, but I'm trying to help somebody to understand that it's okay. It's going to be all right. There's no trouble that God can't handle. Praise God. The Bible says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now we look at that phrase and we say, well, there's nothing he cannot do. And that's true. But how about we read that verse again? With God, nothing shall be impossible. That means if you've got God, there's no possible way you'll have nothing. You plus God can't equal nothing. You got to get something. If you really got the Holy Ghost, uh, you got something. If you're dead and dormant uh, and you don't want to move uh, and you don't want to be shaken, I got to question whether you have the Holy Ghost or not. Uh, because God said with him, nothing is impossible. It's impossible to have nothing. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, God. Let me calm down before I run out of breath. Come on, somebody be shaking in this place. I will not be moved. Praise God. We're going to Acts chapter 2 today. Acts chapter 2 today. In fact, we're going to a lot of scriptures today. Praise God. Brother David, I know I gave you something different. Where's he at? Oh, there you are. I know I gave you all something different. I feel to go a different direction than the Holy Ghost. I spent three days asking God to help me give a rhema word to this church. And I got it all together. And I knew I had it. Or at least I thought I did. <laughs> but ain't that how the Holy Ghost works? I get up here, I'm about to preach a particular thing that I kind of had my heart set on. And the Holy Ghost says no. He says, I know you didn't prepare for this, but I'll help you. I'll help you. Praise God. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Help us, God. Help us, Holy Ghost. Bear with me as I. Praise God. It says this, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, they were all with one, with two, with three. They were all, every single one of us, were all with one accord in one place. And because of that, suddenly, God specializes in suddenlies. You may be sick now, but suddenly. You may be broke now, but suddenly. 
You may be hurting now, but suddenly. I'm telling you, God has a suddenly for somebody in this place. There is a suddenly getting ready to shift in this atmosphere. There is a rushing mighty wind getting ready to blow across this place because God specializes in suddenly with one mind, one accord, one place. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Not from my flesh, not from my intellect, but from heaven. The move of God comes from heaven. It doesn't come from us trying to make God move, uh, but it takes a bunch of us uh, to get together in one place uh, and just tarry and tarry until the Holy Ghost says, I'm coming. And suddenly there came uh, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house uh, where we are sitting. I know it doesn't literally say that, but I'm just reading into the text. All the house where we are sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And began to speak uh, with other tongues as the spirit not what I'm used to not what I already know but as the spirit gave them utterance praise God now jump with me to Acts chapter 10 Acts chapter 10 and we're gonna go to verse start at verse 44 chapter 10 starting at verse 44 it says this while Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word praise God and they of the circumcision the Jews which believed were astonished because God did something that they didn't have in their plans. Because God wanted to go a different route uh, than the church wanted to go that Sunday. God had a program that he wanted to fulfill, and people were shocked uh, because he didn't do what we wanted him to do. Praise God. They were astonished. As many as came with Peter... Because that on the Gentiles, me and you, also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And here's how they knew it. They said that we know that these people received the Holy Ghost as we did because, oh, y'all know the scriptures. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. Amen. Come on, would you lay your Bibles down with me? And we would go to the Lord in prayer uproariously. Would you make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands? Come on. Would you make a joyful noise unto the Lord? All ye people, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his courts with thanksgiving. Praise God. Lord God, I don't know where you're going, but I do know that you are the leader and we are your followers. I pray this day, God, that something that you speak through me would bless this congregation. I pray you would loose my tongue, Lord God, and cause me to speak as an oracle of your spirit right now, this day, to this people, in the name of Jesus. We drive out any force of evil 
that is planning to hinder the move of God today. We curse any thought that says, well, I'm too tired to praise you. Anybody whose thought process says, well, we've already praised earlier in the service. We've already given God what we could give him. The devil is a liar, and he always will be. I curse that spirit uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let all the people praise him. Let all the people praise him. Let all the people praise him. I'm going to talk to us today about this subject. How sweet the sound. How sweet the sound. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Anything of great worth or of great value is rarely, rarely received without hard work. Anything of great value is rarely ever received without hard work, strategic planning, and selfless sacrifice. Notice I said selfless, selfless sacrifice. Praise God. In fact, it can be said that something is only as valuable as the workmanship that was put into it. Amen. Anybody with me? Something is only as valuable as the workmanship that was put into it. People often mention that a lot of blood, sweat, and tears have been put into something that they value. And rightfully so. If you've received something of value in your life, Chances are you have put in a lot of time, you have put in a lot of blood, you have put in a lot of sweat, and you have put in a lot of tears. Everybody in here has received something in their life, whether tangible or intangible, that they put their heart, mind, and soul into. And they received it because of their hard work. And somebody probably somewhere congratulated you because you deserve that congratulations. And so for everybody that has done something and received something, I say congratulations because hard work deserves recognition. Amen. Praise God. Michael Jordan, for instance, was the first to the gym every day. And he was the last to leave the gym every day. And as a result, he has come away from a career of vigorous work and tireless effort with six championships, five most valuable player award of the entire National Basketball Association. And he has gone down as arguably the greatest basketball player to ever lace up some shoes. But why did he become this? He had grit. He had hard work. He had planning. He was strategic. He was the first up and the last to leave. He got the first worm. Praise God. And now just about the whole world knows the name of Michael Jordan. You can go rarely anywhere and find somebody that doesn't know or at least have heard of Michael J. Jordan. Praise God. Thomas Edison, household name. He's credited as the man who gave us artificial light. But few know that he had gone many sleepless nights and failed over 1,000 times to get the light bulb to work. He could have easily waved the white flag and surrendered his efforts after even the tenth failure. But his passion and his dedication has placed him among one of the greatest inventors of all time. 
You can very well go anywhere and people know who uh, Thomas Edison is. Praise God. I can see you today because of the efforts of Thomas Edison. Hallelujah. Now, if we turned out these lights, you probably wouldn't see me. But, praise God. So I am to be most thankful for light. Praise God. Multi-million dollar retailers, such as Walmart, Costco, Target, and many more are where they are in terms of steady revenue and popularity because they spend how much? Countless hours strategizing, planning, meeting, creating top-notch advertising, and developing lofty convenience for its potential, potential customers. They're not even guaranteed, but they spend Millions of dollars on advertising. They plan and strategize. Why? For the chance to get your money. Just the chance. But because of their strategizing and because of their hard work and because of what they put into it, they got them customers. And now Walmart is a household name. I guarantee you just about everybody in here went to Walmart at least once this week. Well, Costco, Target, praise God, household names. But see, the, these examples that I've, that I've given you, they, they really have one thing in common, Brother Stanley. They really have one thing in common. They were and are looking for one common theme. And that one common theme is success. All of them were looking for success. Michael Jordan figured, well, if I'm going to lace up these shoes and make a career out of this, uh, I might as well be successful. Thomas Edison said, well, if I'm going to spend these countless nights uh, and if I'm going to try a thousand times, uh, then I might as well be successful. I tried 999 times. I might as well keep going. These retailers said, well, we started this business. We might as well not give up now. Next thing you know, Walmart is on every corner. Target is all up in your pockets. Praise God. Success. For MJ, success came in the form of lifting the championship trophy over six times. For Thomas Edison, it came when he was able to create uh, the light bulb and light up our nights. And for those big box retailers, success uh, is dependent on a sound. Y'all with me yet? Success uh, for these big box retailers like Target and Walmart uh, is dependent on a sound. Praise God. One sound. Somebody's with me back there. Praise God. One sound. And that is your item going across their scanner. Beep. 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 Why are you laughing, man? <laughs> Beep. Praise God. Success came in the form of a sound. Everything they do, all the board meetings, all the advertising, all the projects, all the marketing schemes come down to one sound. That's the sound of the products they sell in their stores going across the scanner at checkout. That sound typically means that someone is buying something. <laughs> That sound over and over and over means that they are being profitable. That beep sound makes all the effort, all the passion, all the tears, all the planning, all the praying. It makes it all worth it. 
to hear that sound. It's what the owners and the CEOs and the executives uh, live for and thirst for. They want to hear the sound. They want to hear the sound. Hear me today. If these people aren't getting that sound, they may as well close up shop and go explore other endeavors. Church, hear me today. If you are a born-again believer, if you in your life have heard the sound, praise God. Praise God. If you know what your purpose is as a Christian in this world, if you know the truth of the Word of God and your heart isn't passionate and you aren't fervent and you aren't seeking uh, to hear the sound uh, over and over and over again, uh, then my brothers and sisters, uh, it's time uh, for a restoration. If you aren't uh, bubbling inside uh, to get the sound uh, of the rushing mighty wind, uh, then something uh, is wrong with your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You can give me all the excuses in the world you want to. But God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And he will judge what was really going on. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 says, and suddenly they came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Praise God. Praise God. And the people began to let out a sound. They could not understand one another. They didn't know exactly what they were saying. Uh, but a bunch of apostles uh, got together in an upper room. Uh, and they said, we long uh, to hear the promise uh, of the sound. Jesus promised us uh, that he would pour out of his spirit uh, upon all flesh. Uh, and when they waited... Uh, and tarried for 10 days, uh, the sound came, uh, and they fell in love uh, with hearing uh, the sound. Peter was adamant on that day that this is that uh, which was spoken of uh, by the prophet Joel in the last days. Uh, I will pour out of my spirit uh, upon all flesh. Uh, your sons and your daughters uh, shall prophesy. Uh, your old men shall see visions. Uh, and they will dream dreams. Uh, this is that. Uh, and this is what I thirst for. I thirst to hear the sound uh, of a sinner uh, being born of the spirit. Uh, being born into the kingdom. I thirst as a born again believer for the sound that only comes from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And if you don't thirst for that sound, it's time for a revival. I gotta hear the sound. I gotta hear the sound. I'm hungry for the sound. How sweet, uh, how sweet, uh, how sweet the sound. Uh, the angels in heaven rejoice uh, because of that sound. Praise God. Praise God. And if we are to judge angels one day, how much the more should we rejoice at the sound of a sinner speaking in a language they've never learned? How much the more should we rejoice when they come and they fall on their face 
and they get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's the greatest miracle. It's the greatest gift. Every sinner, every backslider, every person needs the Holy Ghost. How sweet the sound. How sweet the sound. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Every human soul needs the Holy Ghost dwelling inside of them. But don't take my word for it. That's not my philosophy. That's, that's, that's not my words. I didn't come up with this. This is the word of the living God. And I don't care what they say out there. Uh, you don't really need the Holy Ghost. Uh, you can either have it uh, or you cannot have it. But praise God, I know what the word says. Let me tell you this. Even if for some off chance we didn't need the Holy Ghost, you know what? I'd rather be safe than sorry. I can't understand Christians who say they love God, but they try to just do the, the bare minimum. Oh, 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 you don't need this. Uh, you don't need that. Uh, all I really need is these few things, uh, and I'm all right. Uh, why wouldn't you want to reach uh, as far as you can uh, in the Holy Ghost? Uh, why wouldn't you want everything that God has promised you? What sense does that make? Uh, what sense uh, does it make uh, to live for God all your life uh, and never move an inch? So even if uh, it wasn't necessary, I still want it. Praise God. Praise God. We got to learn to stop falling short of everything God has promised us. Praise God. I've had pain in my back for some time. And I don't have to be healed to go to heaven. But you better believe I want to be healed. And I'm going to keep fighting for my healing. And if it never happens, it never happens. But you ain't going to stop me from getting everything that God has promised me in his word. He said, I don't have to be bound, but I can be free. You better believe I'm going to go after my freedom. He said, you ain't got to be sick. I can heal you. You better believe that I'm going for my healing. He said, you don't have to be poor. You can be rich. And I ain't just talking about money. You can be rich in all walks of life. You better know that I'm going for gold. Praise God. Praise God. But it remains that this Holy Ghost is essential to every life. Praise God. John chapter 3 and verse 5. John chapter 3 verse 5 says, Unless a man is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Some of our agnostic friends will say, well, that doesn't mean heaven. That just means uh, the, the family of God here on earth. Well, why wouldn't you want to be a part of the family of God? And hello, if you're not a part of the family of God, how in the world are you going to go to heaven? I would hate to, to go to a family reunion, and I'm not a family member. You're going to get some looks. <laughs> Apostle Peter going to look at you and say, you don't belong here. Praise God. Unless a man is born of the water and of, uh, and of the spirit, uh, he cannot enter. Praise God. And how do we know somebody is born 
of the Spirit. Come on, I know this is elementary for some of you, but I'm trying to get us to understand how essential the Holy Ghost is for each and, of, each and every one of our lives. Amen. How do we know someone has been born of the Spirit? John chapter 3 and verse 8 will shed some light for you. It tells us that there is a sound. It says the wind bloweth where it listeth, and we don't know where it's coming from or whither it goes. But so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. He says, you hear the sound thereof. Now, if we dive a bit into the Greek text, we will instantly see that the Greek word for sound there is phone. It's where we get our English word phonics, which simply means of a speech or of a language. So the Bible says we know that the wind is symbolic of the Holy Ghost. It's all throughout Scripture. There's no arguing that. The Bible says that the Spirit moves where it wants to move, and it falls where it wants to fall, and you will hear the language thereof. And then it goes on to say, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So my friends, if you claim that you have been born of the Spirit and you didn't make a sound, you are not filled with the Holy Ghost. There's got to be a sound. There's got to be a language. There's got to be a tongue. Somebody's got to speak out in a language they've never learned. And even if you've already spoken with tongues, when the Spirit gets to moving, there's always a sound. Praise God. How sweet the sound. How sweet the sound. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Starting at verse 9. The Bible gives us some insight on whether we even need this thing inside of us. If a man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It's in the Bible. It's, it's right there in Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. If a man have not the Spirit of the living God, he is none of his. Now let me explain something to you. We are in the people business. The church of the living God, every saint under the sound of my voice uh, is in the people business. And for this Holy Ghost uh, to be so important, uh, and if we don't take it uh, just a little bit more seriously, we've got some people's blood on our hands uh, because we need people to speak uh, in the language of the Spirit uh, because if they're not filled with the Spirit, they are none of His. It's incumbent upon the church to seek and to save that which is lost. Hear me. You can't study to be a lawyer graduate from graduate school, go to your local hospital, and apply to be a brain surgeon. Here's what I mean by that. You can't live this life and be caught up in the cares of this life and be running after all the things of this world and all the treasures of this life, and then one day when the trumpet sounds, you expect to be a citizen of heaven. This is temporary. That is eternal. I can't go to temporary school and graduate with my eternal degree. It doesn't work. Jesus said, I am about my father's business. And he said that at 12 years old, 
He wasn't even authorized to start his public ministry yet. And at 12 years old, even before God anointed him for ministry, he was already about his father's business. You don't have to wait for the call. You don't have to wait for some special anointing. You don't have to wait to hear some voice from heaven say, Arise, my son, I am calling you. You don't have to wait to feel the heebie-jeebies. You just got to know what the book says. And the book says, if a man is not born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So my business is to go after those souls who have not been born again. That's my business. That's my goal. Souls are my goals. Souls are my goals. Come on, somebody. You can be as wise as a serpent. You can have as many degrees as a thermometer. You can do what you want, get what you want. But when the trumpet sounds, none of it, none of it is going with you. Not one single thing. Lay up not for yourselves treasures of this life where thieves can break in and steal and moth does corrupt. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where thieves cannot break in and steal and moth cannot corrupt. I've got treasures in heaven and I want to get some more. Come on, soul. Come get this Holy Ghost. Come on, soul. Come get in this water. Come on. Come on! How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. The apostle said, the apostle Paul said, everything that I've gained in this life, Brother Samson, I count it all as dung. You know what dung is? Excuse me, Pastor, but it's poop. That's what dung is. Everything that he's gained in this life. And the Apostle Paul was on the Sanhedrin. That's equivalent to the government of the United States. He's done it all. And he said, everything that I gained, I count it all as dung. Why? For the cause of Christ. Solomon said, vanity, vanity on top of vanity. It's all vanity. Solomon was the richest human being to ever live. He had everything you can think of, but he said, everything I've ever gained and worked for, it's all in vain. The Apostle Paul said, if I go to heaven and I don't have souls behind me that I've personally won to the cause of Christ, then I have failed miserably. Come on, I have failed miserab miserably if I don't wake up in the morning and say, Lord, lead me to somebody's soul. Lead me to somebody's soul. Bring me here. Bring them to me. I will be ready. I am a vessel. I'm a living sacrifice. I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to do the work of the kingdom. I'm ready. Everything else can wait. you go to work, uh, when you go about your business, your daily business, uh, my God, you ought to be so filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the glory of the Lord ought to be so all over you that people around you will stop and stare and say, man, there is something about that person. There's an old preacher and his son, some of you may know him. His son is Anthony Mangan. And Brother Mangan's father, I heard the story one time, Brother Mangan's father went on a seven-day fast. And on the seventh day, he went to an office that sold pianos. His church needed a piano, but they were dead broke. 
And that was one of the things that he spent time fasting about. It wasn't the only thing, but that was one of the things. And the testimony goes that he went into this piano salesman's office. And as soon as he walked through the doors, the man sitting behind the desk fell back out of his chair. And he stood up quickly and he said, my God, sir, you have a halo over your head. Who in the world are you? And Brother Mangan, being full of the Holy Ghost, didn't even say a word about the piano that he wanted. He recognized that here's an opportunity to birth a soul into the kingdom. See, he wasn't just about his business. Oh, he had some business to take care of, sure. But as soon as he recognized the opportunity, he put it all behind him and he said, come here, young man. He laid his hand on his head and that uh, piano salesman started speaking with other tongues uh, as the spirit gave him the utterance. Why? Because Brother Mangan was about his father's business. Praise God. Praise God. We got to get so filled with passion so filled with joy, so filled with fervency to see a sinner come to the altars and give their life to Jesus that we burn with passion. The scripture says that the zeal of the Lord has eaten him up. The zeal of the Lord has eaten him up. Praise God. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. But we need everybody on board. A shifting of priorities. And that anything that stands in the way of my goal, of my kingdom goal, must be dealt with. This sound is evidence that the Spirit of Christ has made you his dwelling place. But not only that, the Spirit gives us something else. And it's called the fruit of the Spirit. It gives us love, which is the first fruit mentioned. What is love? First, First Corinthians tells us. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that, so that I can remove mountains and have not love, the Bible says that we are nothing. You can slice that any way you want to, but it means nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, Though I have outward ministry so that everybody can see me. Though I gave my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Here's what love is, though. Love suffereth long. I will wait upon the Lord. And I will renew my strength. I will mount up upon wings as an eagle. I will run and not be weary. I will walk and not faint. Love 
suffereth long. Love is kind. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Love does not run people out of the church. Love is kind. Love envieth not. Love is not covetous. Love vaunteth not itself. Love is not puffed up. And let me tell you, there is such a thing as false humility. Oh, brother, you're so good. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. Oh, jeez. Check your spirit. Love does not puff itself up. Love does not have pride. Love is not haughty. For pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Love doth not behave itself unseemly. In other words, it's not out of control. It thinks before it speaks. Love does not behave out of control. Love seeketh not her own. The spirit of this age says, ain't nobody worried about me, so I ain't going to worry about nobody. That is the spirit of this age. Hatred one for another. Selfish. About your own business. But the Bible says, true love seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked, and it thinketh no evil. It rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Love never fail. But prophecies, they do fail. Tongues, they will pass away. Knowledge will vanish away. But true love will stand. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise God. Let me quickly come to a close. I say all of what I've said today to make one final point. And then what I want us to do in this house is I believe God wants to give us a revival of his spirit. He wants to give us an outpouring that will absolutely change us. And only those that want this outpouring will receive it. But I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, it is going to happen. Praise God. We're going to pray. And then I'm going to talk about the Holy Ghost. And then people who have never spoken in another language are going to speak miraculously in another language as the Spirit gives the utterance. Also, there are folks here who need a refreshing and a renewing and a reviving. You are going to be refilled again today. 
let it fall. Being refilled with the Holy Ghost, renewed and refreshed, is biblical. Look at the apostles in Acts chapter 4. They went before the Sanhedrin, before the great men, because they had just laid hands on a man that was crippled in front of the gate called Beautiful. And they carried the apostle uh, Peter and John before them. And they charged them not to talk about this Jesus anymore. But they were about their father's business. And they kept preaching. And they kept preaching. And they kept preaching. And when they all got back together, the Bible says uh, they were all again filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Here's the point I want to I make. Retailers, athletes, and inventors alike, they work tirelessly to produce their desired success. And really what they have worked so hard for and maintain constant passion for, it really has no eternal value. It all goes away when they die or when this world comes to an end. None of it determines where they will spend eternity. We, however, have the keys to eternal life. And oftentimes, and a lot of us would rather spend our efforts and put blood, sweat, and tears into the cares of this life. But if the true church ever got on the same page to work day in and day out for the kingdom of God, to strategize, to plan, to pray, to work, to sacrifice, all for his kingdom. So the sound would come out of the mouths of lost souls. Satan would tuck his tail and flee. Our passion, saints of the living God, we must Burn with passion. The zeal of the kingdom has to eat us up. I want to hear the sound. I want to hear the sound. I want to, to hear the sound. Is that the cry of somebody's heart under the sound of my voice? If you want to hear the sound, I pray that you would quickly, quickly, quickly make your way to these altars. I believe that the Holy Ghost is getting ready to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And if you have not spoken in another tongue, you will. And if you need a refilling, and you do, you will. We want to hear the sound. Let the sound stream all over this sanctuary. Let the rushing mighty wind of the Holy Ghost fall upon us here today. Come on, somebody. Let's reach. Let's shake. Let's stretch. Let's move. Let's fight for the sound because the sound is sweet hallelujah